What's up, nerds? Welcome to Secrets of the Stash. I'm Corey. This is my buddy Cameron. Sometimes Cameron says crazy things about movies that we just don't understand because we're gamers. Cameron. Hmm? Where's the stash? It's gone for now, but it'll, it'll be back in a few days, so... Settle down. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was forced. Uh, all right. Today's question. If you were to reboot the Marvel Cinematic Universe and Disney gave you full control, what would you do and why? You also get back all Fox's and Sony's characters. That's a, that's a big question. That's a lot of stuff. Uh, I don't know. What, what was it again? A uh, reboot? What yeah. I do? Um. Well, the one I like the most, and I, the one I'd want to reboot the most, is X Men. Because yeah, I do love X Men. I do kinda mostly like what they're doing at Fox, but I'd like it to be way more like the comic than what it is like in the movie universe. And um, I don't know the way the cinematic universe is now. Really, the biggest thing I wanted to do is I wanted to go back to the tone and feel of Phase One, where it's like me and my my brother were talking about this the other day about how. The humor and the writing was different in Phase 1. Like, when they made jokes and things and, and I don't know, just the overall dialogue and tone in Phase 1 was a lot different than the way it is now. Like, post-Avengers, everything is fucking family-friendly bullshit except for Captain America. And I'm really not into it, and I think it's a really bad move by Marvel's part. Because then you're not making films anymore, you're just making movies, and it's like, I feel like... Two years from now, everyone's going to forget all about Ant-Man. Like, who gives a fuck anymore kind of thing. And I really, I don't want to, I wish it couldn't be, it wouldn't be that way. Because all the Phase 1 movies are going to stick in my, well, I mean, not Thor, but all the Phase 1 movies are always going to be in my head because Iron Man 1 was a great achievement. And I thought The Incredible Hulk is extremely underrated and it's a great achievement. I love the Hulk movie. And even though everyone craps on Iron Man 2, I still think it was very well written and had a, very, a cool concept. Maybe not executed the best because that was like the first Marvel-controlled movie. But And then Thor was the you know the fast-tracked one. It wasn't that great. But Captain America the First Avenger was great. And then obviously Avengers came along and after Avengers that's when everything went downhill. For me, at least. But I don't know, rebooting everything. I guess the biggest thing I'd want to do is I wouldn't want it to have. I wouldn't want it to be so connected. Like it is a cool idea, having them connected. But now it's like, after like I seriously feel like after maybe Iron Man two might have been the beginning of it, where every movie had to be connected so hardcore. And it's like <laughs> we don't. You don't really need to do that. I feel like if they were gonna do anything, they should just have it like one out of every three movies would be the one that's like really connected and the other ones just be like someone like who walk by a tv and you see tony stark on it that's it that would be the only reference to anyone else in the universe i think it's overbearing and way too kinda much kind of like how hulk like it's not really even connected to anything until the very end like that it might be the after credit scene where tony stark walks into the bar yeah and like another tiny thing in the incredible hulk like whenever he uh Thun, uh, William Thunderbolt Ross I think I said William Thunderbolt no that's the actor William Hurt but Thunderbolt Ross the the uh, general when he went and got like that super soldier serum the one that they were trying to make when you look at the cryo container that it's in it says Stark Industries small little things like that are great and like also whenever they were looking for him in the, in, in the movie and they you see that that you go through like Shields database to see and try and find where he's been going or something like that. Little things like that, I think, are the were the better ones instead of now where it's like, as much as I love Captain America: The Winter Soldier, like seriously, when Robert Redford's like, you gotta have Iron Man come to my kid's birthday party. It's like, are you fucking serious, dude? <laughs> you really don't need to do that. <laughs> yeah, and it just sounds dumb coming out of Robert Redford's mouth. He's a he's a veteran actor and has he saying stupid shit like that. <laughs> But I guess those are the biggest things. I mean, and the biggest, I guess another big thing is I, I wish you could, 
even though back then it was kind of bad, like a, like one uh, one out of every three movies that Marvel made were really bad. But at least back in the day, they still had like a few PG thirteen movies, and a rated R Marvel movie would come out every now and then. Like that's, Blade. That's yeah. The first, the first and the second one are okay. Third one's garbage and. That Tom Jane Punisher is good, but then obviously the rest of like the other Marvel movies that came out at that time were really bad. But um, uh, I just think it would be great to have rated R movies again, especially characters that need to have rated R, you know, treatment. Like if if in this fictional world, all Marvel had all the rights back and had all the characters, then they could make a rated R Wolverine movie. Even though they're, they're doing that now, but they could have done that from the get go, and then. They could have done a Ghost Rider movie rated R and a Punisher movie rated R, done the way they're supposed to be done. And I don't even know what else. Do Fantastic Four right for once. Even though I really do think, because I was fighting hard for it whenever I was seeing trailers for that Fantastic Four movie that came out last year. And I was hoping that was going to be a good movie. Honestly, the way that the trailers made it look, it could have been a really good movie. It just sucked it more that fox you know knows their way in and fucked it all up i feel like if you take that same tone and same look and feel and if actually just did it right it could have been a really cool movie but um i don't know now I, uh, see I, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of like spider-man so i'm just trying to think of other characters but there's so many more, i always so wanted many to characters see you could do. i always wanted to see like maybe a world war ii sequel to captain america or like that style of movie with like Wolverine in it, yeah, like that'd Captain be cool. America and Wolverine, or something like that. Maybe, yeah. oh, that'd be cool. I always thought that would be really interesting if they would have done that. Instead, as much as I love the first Captain America movie, I thought it'd have been really cool if if they weren't trying to you know rush along first Avengers so that when the movie ended it would directly tie into Avengers. But if they could have had if it was in this kind of world too that we're that this question is. If um, the Captain America movie could have been just on its own and didn't have to connect to the Avengers at the end and could have just like ended where it was still in the 40s and then have another cool movie where it's still him in 1942 fighting World War II, fighting Nazis and stuff like that. That would have been awesome because it kind of it, it is a great moment in the movie, but it kind of blows because it's like it's it's a really short montage scene where he's taking out the Hydra agents and stuff like that. And just like I. I really would have wanted to see more of that because a lot of the comics was that. Yeah. You know, it's kind of a bummer. Plus, now they can't even, they can't really go back either. Yeah, you, Cause just you the really way, can't go back. Just the way the movie... They, it would have to be a movie within the timeline of the first movie yeah. if they did that, and they just they can't do that now. And that would be kind of hard to... That would be really hard to do, actually. So it's like there's no way to go back. Uh, Agent Carter is like the only way to go back, honestly. I know. Or if they were to do an Ant-Man movie that that focused on Hank Pym when he was younger. That would be cool. I would hope that would happen, but that's probably never going to happen. No. Especially since they're doing Ant-Man and the Wasp now. It might, it might happen next season, uh, season three of Agent Carter, which is going to be the last season if they do one. Like the rumor, like, I mean, it has to end with her like founding shield. Yeah. So it would be like her, Howard Stark and Hank Pym because he's rumored to be in next season. Mm. So that'd be really cool. Is that it? So in summary, I was just going to say, if hopefully Disney wasn't involved in this question universe here, and you could still have like the PG-13 family-friendly-ish movies, but then still have a rated R movie every now and then for characters that need to be rated R. And even like the, some of the PG-13 movies would be really hardcore, like some of the X-Men movies, and maybe even a Spider-Man movie. I mean, I really feel like a Spider-Man movie could be like a kind of intense pg-13 movie instead it's always gotten like the lighter treatment except for maybe like a few moments in the spider-man movies but they're like moments not the entire movie right but that's what i would do rebooting everything if we're gonna do that but yeah let's see that let's see that 20 years from now we'll be talking about this be like i told you told you told you told you you did it wrong it's right here. Thank you so much for joining us on this week's Secrets of the, uh, Secrets of the Stash. You can find all of our content on digitalnerdadvocates.com and right here on our YouTube page. 
Like, subscribe, and share. Leave a comment below. Let us know what you want to see on the next Secrets of the Stash. Until next week, we're out.